This is a regular meeting of the Township Committee. Public notice of this meeting has been given as required by the Open Public Meetings Law. A resolution was adopted on January 1st, 2023, designating this date, this hall, and 7.30 p.m. as the time for this regular meeting of the Township Committee of the Township of Union in the County of Union. A notice of each and every meeting of the Township Committee was posted in accordance with the aforesaid Open Public Meetings Law in one public place reserved for the posting of ordinances and official notices of the Township of Union, namely the bulletin board next to the clerk's office. In addition thereto, a copy of said resolution was forwarded to the local source in Star Ledger. A copy of said resolution is on file with the clerk of the Township. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This evening, the prayer will be led by Deputy Mayor Cavadas and the flag salute led by Committeewoman Dallas Ward. Would everyone please stand? God of power, might, wisdom, and justice, through you, authorities rightly administered and laws are enacted and judgment is decreed. Assist this township committee with your spirit of counsel and fortitude and guide us to seek righteousness, justice, and mercy and assist us in leading our township with honesty and integrity. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Madam Clerk, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Florio? Here. Ms. Delsfort? Here. Mr. Bowser? Here. Ms. Cavadas? Here. Mayor Figueredo? Here. This evening we have two proclamations that we'd like to present. I'm going to start first with Deputy Mayor Cavadas. Thank you, Mayor. Today I have a proclamation for the Protective Order of Elks Youth Week. Whereas the Protective Order of Elks has designated May 1st through the 7th as Youth Week to honor America's junior citizens for their accomplishments and give fitting recognition of their services to community. Whereas Union Elks Lodge 1583 will sponsor and observe during that week in tribute to the junior citizens of this community. And we're asked to achieve this worthy objective. We should demonstrate our partnership with youth, our understanding of their hopes and aspirations, and a sincere willingness to help prepare them in every way for their responsibilities and opportunities of citizenship. Now, therefore, I, Manuel Figueroa, Mayor of the Township of Union in the County of Union, State of New Jersey, do hereby proclaim the first week in May as Youth Week and urge all departments of government, civic, fraternal, and patriotic groups, and our citizens generally to participate wholeheartedly in its observance. Signed, Manuel Figueroa, Mayor Suzette Cavadas, Joseph Floria, Michelle Dillisfort, and James Bowser, Jr. Thank you, and that's been presented to, uh, to that organization. We also, uh, this month is Older American Month, and uh, I'm going to ask our senior commissioner, uh, Mr. Bowser, Committeeman Bowser, to present that, please. It is my pleasure and honor to present from the Township of Union the proclamation Older Americans Month, presented May 2023. Whereas the Township of Union includes a growing number of older Americans who contribute their time, wisdom, and experience to our community. And whereas the theme this year for 2023 Older Americans Act Month is an aging unbound, which offers an opportunity to explore diverse aging experiences and discuss how communities can combat stereotypes. And whereas communities benefit when people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds have the opportunity to participate, live independently, and whereas the Township of Union recognizes the need to create a community that offers a service and support older adults may need to take, make choices of, about how they age and whereas the Township of Union can work to build an even better community for our elder residents by not limiting our uh, thinking about aging, exploring the combating of stereotypes, emphasizing the many positive aspects of aging, inspiring older adults to push past traditional boundaries and embracing our community's diversity. Now, therefore, now therefore, I, I Manuel Figueroa, Mayor of the Township of Union in the County of Union, State of New Jersey, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2023 20, as Older American Month and urge every resident to celebrate our elder citizens, help to create an inclusive society and to accept the challenge of flexibility 
thinking around aging, signed Mayor Figueroa. Also, Suzette Cobaldis, Joseph Florio, Michelle Delasfort, and James Bowser, Jr. Thank you. Thank you, Committeeman Bowser. Uh, and I know there are three of us on the dais that could accept this, uh, but we're going to call <laughs> some of our younger members to come on up and join us, please, on the dais to receive this proclamation. Thank you for coming up and receiving that. Um, like a motion to approve the minutes of the budget workshop, conference, and regular session of April 25th, please. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Clerk, can we go on to the ordinances and resolutions, please? I have your consideration on second and final reading an ordinance amending Chapter 170 of the Municipal Code. I move that this be postponed uh, and for consideration at our next meeting. Second. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsfort? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Cavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. Establishing a cap bank for the 2023 calendar year. Will the orders be taken up for second and final reading? Second. Calendar year 2023 ordinance to establish a cap bank authorizing that any amount not appropriated as part of the final budget shall be retained as an exception to final appropriation in either of the next two succeeding years. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this ordinance? Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsfort? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Cavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. Providing for various improvements in the Township of Union. Move the ordinance be taken up for second and final reading. Second. A bond ordinance providing for various 2023 capital improvements by and in the Township of Union in the County of Union, State of New Jersey, appropriating $7,255,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $6,892,250 bonds or notes of the Township to finance part of the cost thereof. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this ordinance? Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsfort? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Cavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. I for consideration on draft and first reading an ordinance amending Chapter 256 of the Municipal Code pertaining to clothing donation bins. Move the draft be taken up for first reading by title at this time. Second. An ordinance to amend Chapter 256 of the Code of the Township of Union pertaining to clothing donation bins. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsfort? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Cavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. Move draft be taken up at this next regular scheduled meeting for second and final reading. We have a second? Second. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsfort? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Cavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. 
Amending Chapter 266-66 of the Municipal Code, Parking by Permit in Residential Areas to include Gruber Avenue. Would you have to be taken up the first reading at, by title at this time? Second. An ordinance amending Chapter 266-66, Schedule 25, entitled Parking by Permit Only in Residential Areas by the Township Committee of the Township of Union, County of Union, State of New Jersey. This ordinance affects Gruber Avenue. Mr. Florio. Yes. Ms. Delsfort. Yes. Mr. Bowser. Yes. Ms. Cavadas. Yes. Mayor Figueroa. Yes. Would the draft be taken up for second or final reading at our next meeting? Second. Mr. Florio. Yes. Ms. Delsfort. Yes. Mr. Bowser. Yes. Ms. Cavadas. Yes. Mayor Figueroa. Yes. Amending Ordinance 3729 to add a handicapped space in front of 1034 Krieger Avenue and delete one in front of 679 Gates Terrace. Move the draft be taken up first reading by Tala at this time. Second. An ordinance amending the designation of restricted parking spaces for use by persons with special vehicle identification cards in the Township of Union, Union County, New Jersey. This ordinance creates a handicapped space in front of 1034 Krieger Avenue and removes one in front of 679 Gates Terrace. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsport? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Cavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. Move the draft be taken up at the next regular scheduled meeting for second and final reading. Second. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsfort? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Cavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. Establishing a no-knock registry to allow residents to prevent canvassing or soliciting at their property. Will the draft be taken up on first reading by title at this time? Second. An ordinance establishing a no-knock registry by the Township Committee of the Township of Union, County of Union, State of New Jersey. This allows residents to prevent canvassing or soliciting at their property. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsport? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Gavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. Will the draft be taken up at the next regularly scheduled meeting for second and final reading? Second. Mr. Florio? Yes. Ms. Delsport? Yes. Mr. Bowser? Yes. Ms. Gavadas? Yes. Mayor Figueroa? Yes. The following resolutions authorizing the acceptance of a performance bond in the amount of $5,000 and establishing a special trust fund in the amount of $3,000. $368.96 for Caliber Body Works of New Jersey, LLC, 2260 Route 22 East. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Authorizing the acceptance of a performance bond in the amount of $5,000 and establishing a special trust fund in the amount of $33,600 for Easton Coach, LLC, 601 Lehigh Avenue East. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorizing the tax collector to prepare and mail estimated tax bills. Move for approval. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Authorizing the township to enter into a cooperative pricing agreement with U.S. General Services Administration, GSA Advantage. Move for approval. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Amending resolution 2022-191, increasing the amount of Collier's Engineering and Design by an additional $42,000 for the 2022 Rapkin Park field improvements for bidding, contract administration, and inspection services. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorizing the submission of a strategic plan for the Union Municipal Alliance grant for fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $25,282. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Authorizing the submission of an application for DMHAS grant for funding for the Union Municipal Alliance Youth Grant in the amount of $3,403. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Authorizing the repair of the basketball court at Brookside Park from My Backyard Sports at their low responsive quote not to exceed $39,742.56. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorizing a contract to Peter Todd Inc. for tree trimming and removal services for an amount not to exceed $75,000, state contract T0465. Move for approval. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Authorizing a contract to Lancha Construction for an inflow infiltration reduction to desnag the affected areas of Walton Avenue and Bicentennial Park at their low quote not to exceed $42,000. To approve the contract. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorizing change order number two and final, decreasing the amount to Grenada Construction Corporation by $9,434.15, resulting in a revised total contract amount of $2,053,665.05 in connection with the 2022 Road Improvement Program, Phase 1. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
I ask you to approve the finances as listed on the agenda. Call for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Following communications from Terry Melanda, tax collector, requesting the Township Committee authorized checks issued to the following representing the redemption of tax sales certificates as listed on the agenda. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. From various residents requesting the following block parties Keller Crescent, Saturday, July 1st, 2023, from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Cross Street, Saturday, June 24th, 2023, from 3 to 8 p.m. Lillian Terrace, Sunday, May 28th, 2023, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anthony Manguso, construction official, requesting the following refunds. Soka Development, LLC, in the amount of $10,000 for a demolition bond. Brighton Air Corporation, in the amount of $79 for an unused permit. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 From Ernestine Fry, UTCAO, requesting to close off Hilton Avenue at Jefferson School on June 8th, 2023, from 3 to 6.30 p.m. for the red carpet prom event. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to pause for a moment, Madam Clerk. I'm going to ask if there's anyone here that is here to discuss signatures. Bard, please go out to the uh, hall lobby there at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. From Joseph Venezia, Township Engineer, requesting the following payments. Payment number eight to Your Way Construction in the amount of $236,796.20 for work completed through April 18, 2023 in connection with the Rapkin Park Turf Field Improvement. Payment number eight and final to Grenada Construction Corporation in the amount of $60,000. $226.37 for work completed through April 19th, 2023 in connection with the 2022 Road Improvement Program Phase 1. Payment number 2 to Grenada Construction Corporation in the amount of $279,297.77 for work completed through April 21st, 2023 in connection with the 2022 Road Program Lehigh Avenue Phase 2. Payment number six to Grenada Construction Corporation in the amount of $201,987.68 for work completed through April 21st, 2023 in connection with the 2022 road program phase three. Payment number two to Lancia Construction Corporation in the amount of $545,859.28 for work completed through April 21st, 2023 in connection with the 2022 road improvement program phase one. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. From Patricia Gomes, P Portuguese American Civic Association, requesting a flag raising ceremony on Wednesday, May 31st, 2023, at 7 p.m. Also requesting the use of the showmobile and barricades for their annual Portugal Day event, June 2nd and 3rd, 2023, with a rain date of June 4th, 2023, with all fees waived. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. From Skyler Sampson, 109 Reamer Court, requesting the use of Weber Park for a family reunion on Saturday, August 12, 2023, from 2 to 8 p.m. for approximately 125 people. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The following monthly reports, Clerk's Office, Police Department, Senior Center, and Community Development. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That concludes my part of the agenda. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We get on to our committee reports. Committee Woman Delsport, please. Thank you, Mayor. From our DPW department, the paving crews continue to work on repairing potholes and patching sections of the road throughout the township. Since our last meeting, the road division has performed 346 pothole repairs, multiple crack filing repairs, 177 street sweepings. The sewer division continues to maintain catch basins, pump stations, and outfalls daily performing repairs when necessary. Since our last meeting, the sewer division has performed 95 catch basin cleanings, 110 enzyme applications, six emergency calls, and two catch basin repairs. The shade tree division continues to maintain trees in parks, township properties, and townships right of way. Since our last meeting, tree crews performed nine removals, 21 trims, 38 tree evaluations, and five stump grindings. As a reminder, brown goods such as newspapers, paper, and cardboard should be tied and bundled and placed at curbside for recycling pickup. 
Grass collection begins Thursday, April 13, or began Thursday, April 13, and will continue through Friday, September 29th. Grass should be placed in brown biodegradable bags or garbage cans no larger than 32 gallons. No plastic bags will be accepted. All concerns or inquiries regarding all divisions of public works can be addressed by calling public works at 908-686-1922 or by using the report a concern feature on the township website. And also, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Erica Bell to the Economic Development Advisory Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you. Committee Man Florio, please. Thank you, Mayor, for some of our numbers on our speeding control initiative in the town. Uh, we actually ticketed 20 trucks that were on roads that they shouldn't be on in the past two weeks. Uh, we had 101 stops for, for tickets in, in our community uh, this past two weeks. Again, our program seems to be working as we're trying, again, once again, to control the speed in our community. Uh, for some meeting numbers, uh, directed patrols in the last two weeks at 1,889. Calls for service were 3,344, and we had 67 arrests. I like to read, uh, I try and read one report every two weeks about some of our officers They're going a little bit out of their way. On May 2nd, officers working patrol were notified of a stolen vehicle that was last seen by Westfield officers entering onto Route 22 from the area of Mountside Westfield border. The vehicle was also a suspect vehicle from a possible residential burglary. A short time later, union officers observed the stolen suspect vehicle driving on Route 22 bound eastbound at a high rate of speed. Officers attempted to stop the vehicle, but the suspect vehicle initiated a motor vehicle pursuit, which continued down Route 22 into Hillside before crashing near the Newark border. Union officers, with the, along with the assistance of Hillside Police Department, were able to locate and arrest three of the four occupants of the stolen vehicle. All three suspects were transported to union headquarters and charged accordingly. Uh, one other note, um, we had a crossing guard actually struck on the corner of uh, Liberty and Allen. And uh, very unfortunate, she was in the hospital, I think she's doing okay right now. I'm, I'm saying this because we have a lot of people that request uh, basically crossing streets or, or things like that, you know, uh, Crosswalks, I'm sorry, thank you, Mayor. Okay. And I can tell you personally, I do not, it's your right to go out there, you have the right, the car is supposed to stop. I would never put more than one foot out or two and see if the car stops. We have people in this community or out of this community that drive through those crosswalks without even stopping. Please take, be careful, because it's a crosswalk doesn't mean you're safe. You're supposed to be, but it doesn't mean that. Okay, that's my report for you. Thank you. Committee Member Bowser, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Recreation Department, the Union Recreation Department is excited to announce the online registration for summer enrichment programs is now open. Please visit the Township of Union's website and click on Recreation to visit our online catalog. Programs currently available for registration includes robotics, volleyball, fashion design, chess, art, stop motion, animation, swimming, and more. The Union Municipal Band will be hosting a benefit concert for the Veterans Alliance Memorial Day Parade on Monday, May 22nd at 7.30 p.m. The concert will be held at the Senior Center on Broadway Avenue. Light refreshments will be served. The concert will feature patriotic favorites such as the Light Cavalry Overture and the Armed Forces Medley. Admission is free, however, donations to support the parade will be gratefully accepted. Lastly, the Recreation Department is looking for it a lead tennis instructor for summer lessons. The ideal candidate will be an adult 18 years old plus who has experience teaching tennis to kids and is available weekdays, mornings in July and August. If you or, in, or someone you know is interested, please contact the Recreation Department at 908-686-4200. Senior Report, Health and Wellness, Health Maintenance Program, Tuesday, May 16th, 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Nurse prevention service, blood pressure, and blood checks will be provided. AARP Smart Driving. Class is June 22nd, 9.15 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. $20 for AARP members and $25 for non-members. Poetry Workshop. Beginners and experienced poets welcome. 
Join us for this workshop on creating and reading powerful poems. Tuesday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. with E. Bradshaw from Bradshaw Creative Services, May 30th, June 6th, 13th, 20, 20th, and 27th. Older American Month celebration, May 24th, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Calvary of shows, tunes, vivid stage, light refreshments will be served at the Senior Center. Save the date. May 22nd, Union Municipal Band will be performing at the Senior Center at 7.30 p.m. All are welcome. Concert supports the Memorial Day Parade. Attic Treasures. Looking for vendors? Bring older, new, and in-between items to sell. August 12th and 13th. For more information, call the Senior Center. Guest Speaker. Dr. Cass. Presenting Hearing Aid Coverage. May 10th, 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Theater Project. May 16th. 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Upcoming trips, Wind Creek Casino, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, May 18th, $35 per ticket. Atlantic City Casino, July the 6th, $40 per ticket. Monmouth Park Racetrack, August the 18th, $70 per ticket. Sit down lunch in the rivalry room. Transportation to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, May 19th, a shuttle bus service from the Senior Center to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall will begin at 12 noon and end at 11.30, I'm sorry, 3.30 p.m. For additional information, call the Senior Center at 908-851-5290. That concludes my report. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Cavadas, please. Thank you, Mayor. From our Union Fire Department, they responded to 214 emergency calls for service this period with 94 medical calls. Some significant events during this period are as follows. On April 24, fire apparatus responded to Hawthorne Avenue for a water condition. Upon further investigation, members found a collapsed basement wall that was damaged in a previous storm. The wall was temporarily secured by a contractor but did not, but failed. The utilities were isolated and the residence was secured. The building department was at scene and will follow up with the property owner. On April 26, fire apparatus was dispatched to Route 22 East for a report of a motorcyclist down. Upon arrival, a motorcycle was found to have hit the divider and the motorcyclist was entrapped in the interior metal framework. Union Fire Department performed a rapid extrication of the victim and began treatment. The victim was transported to University Hospital by EMS along with paramedics. His condition is stable at this time. On April 29, fire apparatus responded to Route 78 West for a motor vehicle rollover. Upon arrival, units found one vehicle with severe damage up against the barrier underneath the Springfield Avenue bridge. The driver was unresponsive and showing signs consistent with an opiate overdose. Narcan was, was administered immediately. The squad and truck company extricated the patient and loaded him onto Rescue 3 for transport to Overlook Hospital. Driver became responsive and was stable upon arrival to the hospital. Also, a safety message, message from our fire department, properly use and store gasoline, flammable and combustible liquids with care. Make sure the container is tightly capped when not in use. Clean out your dryer. Make sure the air exhaust vent pipe is not restricted and the outdoor vent flap will open when the dryer is operating. Remove lint from the catch screen and call a professional to clean the exhaust pipe. Lastly, always change your air filter in your HVAC system. And that concludes our report, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I'm going to piggyback on what our police commissioners said. It really starts with each and every one of you out there. And I hope those of you that hear my voice, both on social media and on TV 34, watch that gas battle, watch that speedometer. Please be careful. Um, you know, this crossing guard of ours was in a precarious condition. They have. Uh, illuminated vests, those vests that are nice and bright, they're seen. Please be careful. They're out there for the safety of our children, and someone put them in harm's way. So, again, be cautious when you are driving. Follow the speed limit when you're in the Township of Union. We ask that you do that. Thank you. Um, I'd also want to thank our Township of Union Mental Health and Disability Committee and Union High School for coming together for the month of April for Autism Awareness Month, as the students sported blue wristbands for their ongoing Autism Awareness Initiative. And join us tomorrow, May 10th, from 5.30 to 9 p.m. 
for a night of networking, good food, and drinks, all for a phenomenal cause, and I know you'll all agree with me. Proceeds from this event will go to the medical costs of two of our Washington Elementary School students, Cami and Marciano, who are, are unfortunately battling cancer. For event details, ticket cost, and to purchase tickets, you can visit uniontownship.com or just show up tomorrow at Lagar Restaurant. Am I correct on that? Thank you. Uh, Lagar Restaurant at 530 on Stuyvesant Avenue. You show up, you can purchase tickets there for a great cause. Um, if you are a business owner and you identify as a woman-owned, minority-owned, veteran-owned, LGBTQ plus owned or disadvantaged small business, you have the opportunity to receive a certification through the Department of Treasury that provides access to local and state contracts, grants, resources, and loans. So the Township of Union is excited to be partnering with Kane SBDC to host an application walkthrough lab on Thursday, May 25th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Vox Hall Meeting Center. There is limited space available, so do not delay in signing up. To register, go on to the QR code that are on the flyers or on our township social media. And also, the Township of Union is honored to bring back the Moving Wall, which is the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Moving Wall, from May 17th to the 22nd at Beer Temple Park. Please join us on Thursday, May 18th at 6.30 p.m. for a candlelight ceremony as we pay our respects and honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And anyone interested in volunteering at the wall site is encouraged to visit uniontownship.com. Also, next Saturday, on May the 20th, join us for our Township of Union's third annual bike rodeo, Cyclovia, on Saturday, May 20th. Join us for this 2.4 mile bike loop plus plenty of activities and water stations throughout that loop. But note that this year's bike rodeo begins on Hendricks Drive, plus there'll be an added stop featuring the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. So reserve your spot by visiting uniontownship.com. And uh, we're talking about Memorial Day weekend already. It's coming close, so help us kick off Memorial Day weekend with our pre-Memorial Day encampment on Sunday, May 28th at Freiburger Park, right back here behind Town Hall, from one to four. Come learn and see history come alive with the Continental Army, British Army, and the Hessians. Then on Monday, May 29th, starting at 10 a.m., join us at the reviewing stand at Pearl Harbor Circle, Stuyvesant Avenue, for our Memorial Day parade, followed by a reenactment and memorial program at Honor Roll Park at 12 noon. Come see vintage cars, motorcycles, military units, vehicles, Revolutionary War reenactors, civic and youth organizations as they march for our military. And if you are interested in marching, please email Karen at kcaulfield, at C-A-U-L-F-I-E-L-D, at uniontownship.com. And we, we had a special event this past week. Uh, please help me in congratulating 17 of our Township of Union students who competed in the Special Olympics Area 5 Regional Track and Field Competition in Old Bridge this past Saturday. Every single one of them medaled and will be moving on to the states in June. So special congratulations goes out to Caroline Van Hegens from Union High School who made history as the first blind competitor to compete in an Area 5 track and field event. Caroline and her teammate Cristiano Enriquez were both featured in the opening ceremony. These 11 students from Union High School and six students from Burnett Middle School made our township and the school district proud. And we wish them the best as they move forward with their academic and athletic endeavors. And as we said, I want to take a moment to acknowledge Older American Month. The theme for this year is Aging Unbound, which offers an opportunity to explore diverse aging experiences, and we discuss how communities can combat that stereotype that exists. Every community, including the Township of Union, can benefit 
when people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds have the opportunity to participate and, more importantly, live independently. Township of Union recognizes the need to create a community that offers the services and supports older adults and the choices they make as they age. We as a committee, administration, and township can work together to build an even better community for our older residents by not limiting our thinking about aging, exploring, and combating stereotypes, emphasizing the many positive aspects of aging, inspiring older adults to, adults to push past traditional boundaries and by embracing our community's diversity. And it is an honor that we proclaim this Older Americans Month. And this past Saturday, for those of you that missed it, we had just a wonderful event. We celebrated our first Asian American and Pacific Islander Festival in our Union Center, which was just absolutely amazing. Uh, I want to begin by thanking William Reyes and his team and Stephen Lee for being the spark that brought this to the township. Your team did a phenomenal job, Bill, so thank you so much. Um, I think everyone that was out there was absolutely amazed and blown away from the activities, the food, the vendors, and the artists that performed. We thank all of those that made this a great experience for residents and visitors alike. And um, I, I know there was a vendor that was coming in, Josh from Love Food More. I don't know if he is here at the moment. Josh, you're here? Josh, I think Josh wanted to come up. Uh, Josh and his wife are union residents. They own Love Food More. I love that, that, that name, it's great. Um, and they also said, sold incredible food at our, they sell incredible food at our annual farmer's market. Josh, I think you wanted to come up and say a few words if you come up to the mic right there. And Josh just came from a gig, as I was told. Yes, straight from work, hence the chef coat. <laughs> All right, hello, I'm Joshua Wobolt. I'm the chef owner of Love Food More LLC. Where I know you love food, but let's get you to love food more. That's the concept. <laughs> but we were at the AAPI Festival that was last weekend, and I just want to say how much we appreciate events like that in this town. Um, for me, first moving here uh, just a couple years ago, I remember an article came out in the New York Times. It was like an uh, Asian population in Union was like 3%. And then having this be the first uh, Asian American Pacific Islander Festival being held in Union and seeing all the support we got as a small business and as a small business Asian uh, as a whole and seeing everyone come out and supporting our booth and taking pictures with everyone and all the food and all the love we got, it was a really great thing for my wife and I. I always say that the... the um, you know, I have an amazing team behind me that does what, to help me do what I do, uh, to be able to create food for uh, the community. And um, I said it takes an amazing team to do great things and then a community to sustain it. So I appreciate, you know, um, um, Bill and his team to put uh, an event like this and all the events throughout the year because they make it really, um, make me really want to continue to look more into the future of my business growing with Union Township for sure. Because we do plan on Eventually getting a brick and mortar. Right now we just do pop-up events in farmer's markets uh, every Thursday, uh, <laughs> if anyone's free. <laughs> and, um, and then we do private events as well. So we would definitely love to get uh, a spot here in the near future uh, and grow with the, the community. So thank you for hosting that event, and I look forward to doing more events like that with you guys and growing with the, the community. So thank you. And our residents can come and visit you every Thursday, correct? At uh, every Temple Thursday, Park, yes. Beard at Temple. the food market, right? Exactly. The, and starting, farmer's market. It's starting June 1st. We will be there June 8th for the rest of the season. And yeah. it's Love Food More. Love Food More, yep. I have a black tent and a big banner. And it's just uh, my wife and I out there <laughs> cooking all the food. So. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And with that, I close my portion, my comments. We'll open the public portion. Anyone wishing to speak, please come on up to the microphone. State your name and address. Good evening, Mayor Figueredo, distinguished council members. My name is Mark Packer, and I live at 644 Fairfield Way in Putnam Manor at the T intersection of Fairfield Way and Princeton Road. I'm appearing before you as a representative of concerned residents of Putnam Manor and its environs who stand in fervent opposition to an anticipated subdivision of 380 Princeton Road, as well as the current rental of this single family dwelling to no less than eight college boys from Kane University. 
I'm sure you're all aware of the character of Putnam Manor. It's adorned with some of the loveliest homes and quietest streets in Union Township. It is, of course, why the community is populated by families who've lived there for decades and have a great sense of pride in their neighborhood. It's also why the homes in this community are among the highest in real estate value in Union Township and have the highest municipal taxes. 380 Princeton Road, which abuts suburban golf course, was built in the 1940s and is one of the loveliest homes in our enclave. It was recently sold to a self-described developer who does not live in Putnam Manor or the Township of Union for that matter, and he has in turn rented the house to the aforementioned college students. Streets that previously had no cars parked on them are now choked with vehicles belonging to the students themselves and to their frequent guests and party attendees. There are no sidewalks in our area, so families with young children and infants are compelled to walk in the streets, and until recently, that wasn't a problem, and now it most definitely is. And where we once treasured the peace and quiet and serenity of our neighborhood, that quiet is frequently eradicated by loud partying by a large group of college kids. We are not a college campus. Of greater concern to many people in our community is the possibility that the new owner, Mr. Yuri Simzik, intends to seek permission from the township to subdivide this property, destroy this lovely home, and build two McMansions on that land that might have four to five bedrooms each. While parking and congestion at our intersection is bad now, this will be intolerable to many of us. In addition, we would be subjected to months of demolition and construction, including a parade of construction vehicles, parking, arriving, departing, further intensifying an already unsafe environment for pedestrians. We would have to endure the dust, the noise, and the disruption of our lives for over a year, all for the sake of lining Mr. Simzik's pockets. We all believe in responsible development for our community, but there is nothing responsible or desirable about this unless the township is only guided by the potential of monetary gain by having two houses where there is currently one. We hope that you, as stewards of our community, will take into account our quality of life and the preservation of the unique character of Putnam Manor we respectfully ask that you deny any subdivision of this property and perform a forensic assessment of the impact of the current lease of this property. Thank you so much for your time and attention to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Packer. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. We did receive all of your emails, and uh, we respectfully addressed that. And I know we had the professionals out there doing the best that they could uh, as far as moving forward, I'm going to have our administrator, Mr. Travisano. Mayor, thank you. Mr. Packard, thank you for your comments. Um, as the mayor indicated, uh, we did receive approximately three dozen emails from the residents. Hear the residents loud and clear. Uh, we've also received numerous reports of concern regarding parking and other, other items. To the extent that uh, you know, there are really sort of two issues here. One is the, uh, the rental of the, uh, of the house to the college students. I can tell you that our police department has been out there, by my estimation, probably near two dozen times uh, uh, for calls for service. And each and every one of those times, um, the complaint has either been addressed or there's been no finding of, of anything that needs to be addressed. The report back is that uh, they're well-behaved young people. That's not really the issue. The real issue here is 
I see somebody, I mean, I see you laughing back there. You, I don't know what else to tell you other than we've been out there and we've been out there numerous times and we're happy to address any complaints. If you have them come in with details, we're happy to, to address them. Secondary piece is, uh, is obviously the subdivision. That's a little trickier. Trickier because the township committee doesn't decide on those things. That's an issue that is, is before the planning board. Uh, I would absolutely encourage you that if it does get to the planning board, please come out and voice your concerns. I'll tell you that based on the emails that I received from the neighborhood, I met with the, uh, the developer owner. I expect to have further meetings with him. And honestly, the solutions that we've discussed have ranged from uh, him moving ahead without, with an understanding of the consequences to him withdrawing the application. I don't know what direction he's going to go in at this point. I do know that I have a follow-up meeting scheduled with him next week. Um, happy to communicate the results of that and any other concerns that you may have. I'm happy to continue that conversation. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please come up, state your name and address, please. Robert Felly, 690 Fairfield Way, Union, New Jersey. I live about a, mm, three or 400 feet from the home that we've just been discussing. Um, so I'm gonna address that issue. I'm Vice President of Putnam Matter Civic Association, so I'm representing them. The President can't be here, he's not feeling well. And uh, first of all, we have 100% backing of this gentleman from Putnam Manor residents. Everyone in our neighborhood is in agreement. Beautiful home, why would we knock this down? For what possible reason? Except for money, of course, money is more capitalist government, capitalist country. But you don't live in the neighborhood, you don't even live in the town. You don't, have, you don't really care about the neighborhood, which we do. I came from the town of Kearney when I married my wife, Diane, who lived on Whitewood, she grew up on Whitewood Road. I had no intention of living in Union. I was looking in Springfield, I was looking at Milburn, we're looking up at Morristown, we're looking up at Berkeley Heights, all these places, that's where I wanna go. My wife suggested that we take a walk around the block from where she lived on Whitewood Road and go through Putnam Manor. I was like, wow, this is beautiful. This is, this is unbelievable. I, I never even knew any place in Union looked like this. So I decided, okay, this is where we're gonna live. We're not gonna move out there. We're gonna stay here. We bought a beautiful home in a beautiful neighborhood. But this is gonna change the neighborhood. This is ridiculous. Taking a beautiful home, knocking it down. Now, the aspect of this, the rental part, it's what I understand, that he's legally renting these, this property right now. There's nothing we can do about it. This is a legal rental. So I'm looking at this as, if that's legal, and he decides to knock it down and build two homes with four or five bedrooms, What's prevent him from renting those two homes to college students? So instead of having eight, now we got 10, 12, 14, 16. Because if this is legal, what's to make it illegal if he builds two houses and rents them? So now we got a real party going on here. Is everybody invited? I hope so. I hope I get invited. So that's one of the problems we have also besides the building, is if, if he does build two, if he's leasing one, why can't he lease two? How'd you like living in that neighborhood? It goes from a beautiful neighborhood to now a party town in one spot. Another aspect of this, I was contacted by a prominent lawyer from Union who's been in this town for many, many, many years. And I know he's, he, I basically, I think he, he specializes in real estate. And he quoted to me that since it's being rented, this is a boarding house. If you have multiple unrelated people in that, and, his, and this is, he's again, he's a longtime Union attorney. His thought was, it's a boarding house, it's a business, we're not zoned for business in Putnam Manor. So why is this a business in Putnam Manor? He's renting it out. It's not an owner renting it while he's living there. He's just renting it out as a boarding house, as a business. We're not a business district. When was Putnam Manor a business district? I didn't see any sign welcome to business district Putnam Manor. It's supposed to be a residential district for families. So that's what I have to say about that. And uh, I know this is a different group of people I need to address this to. Um, but. We're concerned, we love our neighborhood. I don't know about the rest of this town, how they feel their neighborhood, but we love our neighborhood. So our, uh, we're having a meeting this May, May 15th, our regular spring meeting for Putnam Manor. This is the topic for the whole meeting that's gonna happen and how we can support our neighbors uh, to move against this. 
We can talk to this owner into improving the inside of the house, put it back on the market. I'm sure someone would love to have this house. Um, and that's it. That's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please state your name and your address, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Ken Schuster, 357 Plymouth Road. Uh, my questions really relate to the path that leads from the base of Pitcher Terrace through the Washington uh, woods and then to the base of Dogwood Drive, which then comes up to um, Washington School. Um, the path that has been there for years um, has degraded, obviously, over those years. Um, probably more so since uh, Hurricane Ida, with a lot of downed trees, and when the town came in to take care of the trees, with the heavy vehicles that they had and what have you, they really tore up what was left of the macadam uh, path that ran through there, which was never consistent, but it's a lot worse now. Um, and it's, it's much more difficult to walk through there. There are a lot of people, myself included, but there's a lot of more elderly people who are a little more, uh, less mobile than myself. Children are walking uh, through there from Washington School to and from, um, obviously to Putnam Manor and to uh, other areas uh, that obviously would go to Washington School. In short, my question is, uh, and I assume it would be the DPW. Can they get in there and redo the path um, so that it's smooth uh, for walking? Um, also, this path goes over a stream that runs there, and there's a concrete pipe that the, the path traverses over. And uh, there was some um, guardrails there uh, be, to keep the kids off the, you know, provide a little something there. Those got knocked down by some of the trees that uh, fell down during Ida. So I'm just wondering if the DPW can get in there, take a look at it, and perhaps redo the path. I don't think it's a very big job. We have Superintendent um, right behind you. I'm going to have him. Okay. If you wouldn't mind. Uh, was that it for Mr. Schuster? Basically, that's it. I think you get the gist of it. We can see if he can address that. Mr. Oliver, would you come up, please? Thank you. Hello, sir. Uh, real quick, uh, just to address uh, this situation. So we've gone in there periodically to clear this area. Uh, if you, in case you don't know, that's yes, considered Green Acres. So okay. there's a lot of limitations to what we're allowed to do mm -hmm. in Green Acres property. For one thing, we can't increase the impervious uh, uh, foundation of it. So we can't pave in there. That, that's a no-no. We would actually get cited by the DP. Okay. Technically, even with falling trees, we're not really supposed to touch the habitat there. Okay. okay? But we do go in periodically. We'll clear the path. Uh, I can have crews go in there like we've done in the past. We'll make sure that there is a, you know, a feasible walkway for anybody that can yeah, get from point A you, to point B. I understand what you're saying. Could it be graveled, you know, just loose gravel or maybe some chips? That I mean, technically, got? we're not really supposed to do, supposed that. To do that. I mean, either. because it is considered okay. green acres. Um, right. But again, that doesn't mean we can't clear it and right. make it accessible for people to walk through and make it safe. So I'll have crews go in there. We, like you said, we've done it in the past. We'll remove some wood. We'll make sure there's no, you know, no obstructions. Uh, we'll check out the guard rails and stuff like that as well. If I can ask a question relative to Green Acres, if you can expound on that, because, I mean, it's not my ballywick, who would be responsible for Green Acres? Is it something that you would have to ask the county or the state to say, hey, could we do this? State. That's state. state. Yeah, that's, and it's I mean, I'm sure you're friendlier with the state than I am. Is that something that you can bring up with them to ask because of, again, the children, because of the elderly people, we've got uh, elderly month. Uh, there are a lot of older people that walk through there, um, you know, that traverse from Putnam Manor. Yeah. Again, elderly grandparents taking their kids up to school, you know. We can ask. It's a very onerous okay. process. Okay. The state isn't always very receptive okay. to changes in Green Acres. And that's not just that location. Understood. It's any Green Acre location. And our superintendent, Lou, uh, Lou Ulrich, will tell you the same thing. Am I correct? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a long, drawn-out process. But in the meantime, I, yeah. again, we can do Understood. what we can in there. We'll have well. them look there and see what they can do. Appreciate try. anything you could do. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sir. Schuster. Already. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move to adjourn. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a great day, everyone.